Hello again, everybody. It is Thursday, April 14th, 2022 in San Diego, California, and I'm Captain Perry here with you. If you're new to the channel, here behind me is a scow bow mini cruiser I'm building. I'm making it with the foam sandwich construction method. So we got fiberglass skins over a rigid PVC foam. She's gonna have twin keels and right here up forward, it's kind of a cat boat design. It's got the mast up forward. It's going to be the mast, which is freestanding, no rigging. It's called a Jungstrom rig. So that means that the mast spins to furl up the sail around it. I'm building her as watertight as I can and the control lines will be led into the cabin. So from the main hatch, I should be able to control the boat even in a downpour and not get wet or anything. The intention is to make a really strong watertight boat for an ocean crossing. And speaking of that, I wanted to thank a viewer, Thomas, who through the Amazon wish list sent me this great bulkhead mounted compass. This is going to be great for guiding me on my trip. If you want to support the boat build or the eventual ocean crossing too, uh, Amazon wish list is a great way to do it. And there's also Patreon and other links like PayPal for donations if you want to do that. Hey everyone, I wanted to thank you for your excellent comments on episode 22 where I installed the bow eye. Um, I do appreciate and read all your comments and I take some of the advice and incorporate it into my boat build, so really appreciate it. And I want to do a giveaway today. Anybody who comments has a chance to win because after 10 days, I'll take a random comment and I'm going to send you this art piece I did of my boat. Now because of those comments, it made me go back and look at recommendations for backing plates and realized that the one I made out of G10 really wasn't sufficient. Now these are the um, guidelines that I found. Your backing plate should be two times the thickness of your bolts. So it needs to be about double this because I'm using 3 8 inch bolts. It needs to be, the whole plate needs to be 10 times the bolt diameter for cord sections. So in this case, that'd be about 3.75 inches. And the edges should not be square because then you get like a point that pushes into the hull. So you want a rounded edge and the guideline for that is minimum radius of five times the bolt diameter. And the last one is that the edges should not be cut 90 degrees like this. They should be cut uh, tapered at an angle. So I went back over to my friend's house who has a jigsaw that actually angles and I cut two of these at a 45 degree angle. They're rounded. I've met all those guidelines that I just told you about. And what I'll do next is glue these together and then I will sand these so that the edges are smooth. Well, now that my backing plate is larger, I've got to fill in more area here between the hull and the backing plate with thickened epoxy. So I've wrapped these threads in plastic and I've got some turtle wax here just so it doesn't get stuck again. I'm gonna rub some turtle wax I have on these threads. Petroleum jelly would be a better option for this purpose, but this is just what I had on hand. I get the comment sometimes that some people really don't like the background music. So I've made this video more silent. If you prefer it like this, please let me know in the comments because I can't tell if it's just a vocal minority. So I started with a large bed of thickened epoxy on the back of the backing plate and pushed it into place. And then I'm just gonna push some extra epoxy in around the edges.
Now I'm just going to tighten up these bolts and then clean up any squeeze out that comes out the edges. And we should end up with a perfect bed of thickened epoxy that will evenly spread the forces from this load. I've glued the two halves of this backing plate together just with some Gorilla Glue and let it cure a couple hours with some dive weights on top. Gorilla Glue expands and foams up as it cures so I'm just going to take a one inch chisel and knock off this squeeze out. Now I'm going to hit the edges with my orbital sander to get them smooth. And last of all, I'm just going to hit up the bolt holes with a round file just to get that squeeze out that was in the middle as well. All right, here you can compare the old backing plate to the new one. It's double the thickness, and the surface area where it connects with the hull is probably about four times as uh, much area. So it's really going to do a good job spreading out those forces. Now, because it's doubly thick, um, I can't use this bow eye anymore because I cut these off shorter, but it will still be useful um, I think what I'll use this for is towards the main hatch on the deck. This would make a good attachment point for a uh, safety harness. So I'm going to hold on to this. But I went ahead and bought a new one. And this one's still long. And I added some lock nuts on here. And I'll move this uh, stainless backing plate onto here. And let's try dry fit. Okay, now we are inside the bow, and I think we did actually a really good job here, but there are a couple little voids, but uh, they'll easily be filled with some thickened epoxy. Next time I mix up something for something else, I'll fill these in. I'm going to put the big backing plate on first. Let's push this through again. There we go. And then this stainless piece. This one, which probably isn't necessary, but it came with the uh, bow eye, so might as well use it. Uh, lock washer, lock washer, and then two stainless nuts. Now, if that's not going to be super strong, I don't know what will be. Also, last time I was at my local plastic store, they happened to have a bunch of remnants um, of G10 in these circular pieces, which would be awesome for making more backing plates. I got 
uh, just grabbed quite a few of them. They're quite cheap when they're already cut like this for some other project. So I do have three of these very sturdy, beautiful stainless cleats I bought. One for the deck up at the bow right in the center and one for the starboard side, one for the port side up close to the top where the hull meets the deck. Well, because I'm making this boat more of a utilitarian, low maintenance cruising boat, there's not going to be a lot of pretty wood on the boat, but there will be three pieces. And I found this piece yesterday and I just love how uh, close together all the uh, grains are. I thought it was so pretty um, compared to like this work stool I made. You can see the difference in this cut. The grains are so far apart. So this one will go over here as kind of a the riser for this step right here. And this is six feet across. So that'll be unpainted and I'll probably do a finish of oil on that. And then for the compartment walls, at the tops of the compartment walls, will be handholds and this pine rail. Um, this piece is actually poplar that I was going to use, but I don't know, this is so pretty I might have to try and find something that really matches it. I was planning on just doing a linseed oil finish, but if you guys have any other recommendations, just leave it down in the comments. I'd love to hear them. My plan for the rest was, I'm thinking maybe like a two-part epoxy paint on the cabin sole which should just be like half inch plywood, uh, haze gray color for that. And then all the, the rest of the inside of the hull and the overhead will just be a white. Since it's a small space, that white should be good for spreading the light around into all the little corners. All right, I wanna share with you guys my plan for the cabin sole. And it's pretty cool, I think. In a way, there isn't even a cabin sole. It's just like a bunch of bilge hatches. Five to be exact. So what I'm going to do is have the cabin sole made up of half inch plywood uh, similar to this. This is just a scrap piece for example. Um, but this is the battery box and what I'm going to do is epoxy on a ledge here that will go all the way across and in this way you don't need any hinges, uh, like stainless hinges or bronze hinges. And I thought about doing rope hinges, but this method is just simpler because you don't need to drill, say, 10 holes. Um, you just got to glue on one piece of wood. So what you do is there'll be two stainless latches, one here and one here, that you rotate. And so you can rotate them to unlock, and then you'll be able to Get your fingers in here and pull it out from under this ledge and then lift it up. So no hinges needed, very simple. And then you put it down, slide it back under that ledge and put the latches back on. And if the boat were to turn 180 degrees upside down, all these points and the ledge will be very strong to hold everything in, batteries and all that. And I think actually I'm going to tie down the batteries as well as an extra precaution. Now down here, it'll be the same thing. Um, so if I just raise up this kickboard here, it's going to be more like this thickness. And there'll be another hatch down here. So it slides under. And um, here on frame, this is frame C4. So there'll be Two latches here, and this one, there'll be a little hole back here. We just lift up a little, pull it out, and then you can lift it all the way up. And then when you're done getting stuff from under there, you can slide it back in, latch it down. So there'll be five hatches like that, and that'll make up the whole cabin sole. So basically what I'm thinking right now is it would be prudent to attach this kick plate and other hatch supports like this one um, you can see that'll go just just like this there's other frames that need them too just to further help support the hatches or the cabin sole and also the ledge 
that needs to be attached here and another one up forward at C2, just like this. Another ledge needs to go there. So I'm just thinking it's smarter to attach those ledges and cabin sole support pieces before the chines and the sides go on and it becomes more of an enclosed space that's harder to work in. What do you guys think of this cabin sole hatch system? Let me know in the comments and let me know if you think of anything else I should do before the sides and the, uh, and the chines go on and it gets a much tighter space to work in. Okay guys, well thanks for watching today and um, I will see you guys in the next one. If you want to support the channel, there's uh, links for Patreon and other things down in the description and I'll see you next time. Mr. Bordell, let's make all preparations. We're getting on the way. Hey, uh, what's your name, buddy? Home. Home and get back to your station or I'll have you shot from a mutineer. Well, shoot something. Yeah.